So today we have a nice geometrical theorem and it is known as the Sivas theorem. Take a triangle and label its corner as A, B and C. Now draw a line segment AD such that it is the angle bisector for angle A. Now similarly draw the line segment BE and CF, both of them being the angle bisector for B and C respectively. Now over here some interesting things are happening. The first thing that you may observe is that the angle bisectors for all the three angles meet at a particular point. And this happens not only in this particular triangle but in any triangle that you can imagine whether it's a right angle, it's an acute angle or obtuse angle or whether it's equilateral, isosceles or a scalene triangle. In any triangle the angle bisector for all the three angles will meet at a particular point inside the triangle itself. Now the second thing that is happening over here was observed by Siva. Look carefully that because of the points D, E and F in the triangle ABC the sides are getting divided. So let the length of the line segment AF be equals to A, BD be equals to B and CE be equals to C and the remaining ones let it be equals to X, Y and Z. Now Seva observed a very nice relation between this line segment. He gave us this particular relation that is product of A, B and C would be equals to product of X, Y and Z. So this is Anmol Mishra and now let us see the solution. How can we prove this particular theorem? So first of all before we move on to the actual solution let us discuss this simple theorem. Suppose you have a triangle PQR and you draw a line 7 PS such that it is the angle bisector for angle P. Hence these two angles would be equal and let it be equals to theta. Okay. Now as soon as in a triangle the angle bisector comes, there comes a theorem known as the angle bisector theorem. It states a very beautiful relation between the sides of the triangle. So in this particular triangle PQR, these two angles are equal and equals to theta. Let the side lengths of this triangle be equals to A, B, C and D. Now angle bisector theorem states that A upon B would be equals to D upon C. Now let us find out why these ratios are equal. So take the triangle PQR, draw a ray RY that is parallel to PS. Now extend the line 7 PQ as a straight line to meet the ray at a particular point M. Now as per our construction, the line 7 PS is parallel to the line segment MR. Now as we have parallel lines, we can simply use the theorems that are related to parallel line. The first one is the alternate interior angles are equal. Therefore, the angle SPR equals to angle PRM and it would be equals to theta. Similarly, the second theorem that is the corresponding angles are equal. Therefore, the angle QPS equals to angle QMR and it would be equal to theta. Now look carefully in the triangle PMR. The base two angles are theta. Hence, the respective sides become equal. That is PR equals to PM and it would be equal to D. Now take the triangle QMR. In this, we have a line 7 PS that is parallel to MR. Hence, we can use the basic proportionality theorem. And if you want to see the proof of this particular theorem, Michael Penn has a very nice video on it. The link is in the description. So basically, the proportionality theorem states that if in a triangle, we have a line 7 that is parallel to one side of the triangle, it will bisect the other two sides in the equal ratio. So over here, we have a line 7 that is parallel to third side of the triangle. Therefore, it will bisect the other two sides in the equal ratio. This means A upon D would be equals to B upon C and when you will do cross multiplication you will get A upon B equals to D upon C. So here we can see that the ratios are actually equal. This means the angle bisector theorem is correct. Now let us move on to the actual solution. So over here we have a triangle ABC and line 7 AD, BE and CF are angle bisector for A, B and C respectively. And also we have given the length to the line segments as per variables a, b, c and x, y, z. Okay. Now total length of a, b becomes a plus x. The total length of b, c becomes b plus y and the total length of a, c becomes c plus z. Okay. Now if I just remove the line 7, b, e and c, f, what we observe is a triangle a, b, c, a, d being the angle bisector. So we can simply use this particular angle bisector theorem that we just discussed. So using this theorem, we can equate the ratio. Therefore, a plus x upon b equals to c plus z upon y. 
Now after doing cross multiplication, we will get b upon y equals to a plus x upon c plus z. Keep this as equation number 1. Now just bring back the line 7 BE and remove AD. Again a triangle BE being the angle bisector for B. Again we can use the angle bisector theorem. Therefore B plus Y upon C equals to A plus X upon Z. After cross multiplication we will get C upon Z equals to B plus Y upon A plus X. Keep this as equation number 2. Now finally bring back the line 7 CF and remove BE. Again a triangle, CF being the angle bisector for C. We can again use this particular angle bisector theorem. Therefore, B plus Y upon X equals to C plus Z upon A. And when you will do cross multiplication, you will get A upon X equals to C plus Z upon B plus Y. And keep this as equation number 3. Now carefully observe the equation number 1, 2 and 3. Now when I say that observe the equations carefully, we have to think for the best way to simplify the equation and reach the final answer. So over here, the best way to reach a final answer is to multiply these three equations. Let us see. So on the left hand side, we will have b upon y into c upon z into a upon x. And this thing would be equals to a plus x upon c plus z into b plus y upon a plus x multiplied by c plus z upon b plus y. So on the right hand side we can see that a plus x, a plus x got cancelled out, b plus y, b plus y got cancelled out, c plus z and c plus z got cancelled out, giving us the final result as 1. And on the left hand side we have a into b into c upon x into y into z and this thing is equals to 1. And when you will do the cross multiplication, you will get a into b into c equals to x into y into z. And that's the answer that we were looking for.